All right, what's up, guys? Uh, as I announced earlier, coaching is back, and today we got our first uploaded session of the return of coaching. So uh, today we have a plat player. He's 1783 on his peak, and he's currently 1600, which is uh, technically slightly below uh, where I like to have you guys for coaching. But his peak is past it, so I know we can get back there. He plays sword and gauntlets, which means he may, but he chooses to main core and a Tori instead of like Val or something, which I'll probably bring up. And uh, yeah, his mechanics are decent, all that good stuff, normal stuff, normal stuff. And he sent me what? Let's see, three games here on the core that he sent. And we're going to talk to him about all that stuff, his main and all that. And then, yeah, so if you guys enjoy coaching and happy to have it back, make sure you show me some support on the video. And all that stuff. And uh, if you want coaching, you already know where to find it. Link in the description. Message me on Discord. All that good stuff. And uh, let's get on with it. Okay, hello? What's up? What's up? So you said you main gauntlets and uh, sword. But yeah. you play core and Hattori separately instead of playing Val or something, right? Yeah. Is there a reason for that? or like? Um, I've just never really tried Val, I guess. Mm. But I mean, that would make sense. No, it's fine. I'm just making sure. And uh, you said your mechanics are pretty good, so I'm assuming uh, you can do... Yeah, they're pretty decent. I uh, hit co you, true combos pretty consistently. You play controller or keyboard? Uh, keyboard. Okay, so you can do the gauntlet 3 hits, I'm pretty sure? Like all the GCs and stuff? Uh, like GC downlight into yeah, like, uh, Nair. Uh, yeah. GC downlight Nair there, GC downlight uh, Nair uh, recovery. Yeah. Okay, you can do GC downlight recovery too, all that good stuff. So you'll yeah. be fine in that regard. You're probably just that's not that too, that's those aren't too hard, so it's fine. You're probably just looking at uh, the normal shit where it's just like yeah spacing and what move should I have thrown out here? Where should I be? What's this matchup? So it's fine. And mm -hmm. uh, you said your mentality is fine. A couple games takes a toll, but that's true for everyone, even myself. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. So if you <laughs> If you think that's fine for you, then it's it's all good. Just never, just always remember that even after a couple losses, it probably just doesn't matter. And as long as you find yourself learning, if you find yourself not learning or you find yourself like wasting your time playing, then it's probably time to stop playing. Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't. It's at the end of the day, you're gonna be playing this game for fun because at the end of the day, it's still a game. But mm -hmm. if you're getting too upset or you're just like playing pointlessly and mindlessly, and you're actively trying to improve playing pointlessly mm -hmm. is hindering you rather than helping you so mm -hmm. and uh yeah so i think with all that we can get straight into the replays you sent uh, i'm just going to point out the normal stuff and if i have anything i want to add on or show you uh i would bring that up you sent me three replays you said you had some more if we go through uh, these fast or whatever or if there's a specific one you want me to see because you have three here then i'll look at okay. that but i can yeah. just start with uh, uh st oh yeah can we start oh. with the um the the guitar matchup with uh, Sentinel, Sentinel? Sure. yeah, okay, because guitar is one of my like hardest to play against. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with that for me too. So. <laughs> and then these were um, mm -hmm. customs okay, against. So... Uh, I was sparring one of my uh, one of my friends, and he's uh, low diamond I think. Okay, gotcha. 1900 around there. So. Why well, don't I have sound? Yeah, I mean, I don't have it with sound on, so you can see my pen when I draw. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And okay. it's just brawl hall of noises, so I don't think. Okay, matters. I just want to make sure. Okay, so uh, we're not gonna spend too much time on this because it doesn't really matter. It's just like normal thing. But the yeah. GC side light was kind of weird. But that's fine. You gotta get punished there, and you're doing a lot of arm stuff, which and they're in bursts, which is actually how you want to play on arm, which is pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. With an arm, you genuinely want to just like press your keys, and that sounds stupid, but you just <laughs> literally just press your keys towards them, mm -hmm. and uh, that should be working. And then, because the counter down arm usually is just like standing still and mm -hmm. not and letting them do stuff, then you can punish the stuff they do. This guy mm -hmm. is kind of trying to fight you back while you do stuff, and it's uh, leading you hitting him more. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of a deal. As you can see, stuff like this is one instance, but it's a bad habit, right? Of mm -hmm. what to not do on hammer against guitars, right? So you spot mm -hmm. dodge, and then you go for the downlight, and he's already clearly off stage. And this is the problem with it is you can react to the fact that he's been off stage. You're doing your end light too fast because mm -hmm. realistically, 
if you would have spot dodged that perfectly and not gotten hit by that or been where you actually wanted to be, end light would have been like your last resort. Like if you would spot dodge where you wanted to spot dodge and mm -hmm. actually kept them close to you, this should be a down light punish, right? Mm -hmm. Not an end light punish. So this end light is rushed and it's also going to miss because he's off stage. And mm -hmm. it's not too big of a deal, except now you take some damage with him coming back and then you mm -hmm. by that too. So another end light, you're doing these way too much and way too frequently. I think I'm gonna end up seeing you doing a bunch of these. Mm -hmm. When in reality, the, they're not a move you actually care about on Hammer. And mm -hmm. uh, the reason I'm gonna explain that to you now, why you don't care about this move is because let's look at it here. Yes, it has good frames and good numbers behind it, but it also looks like this in a game. Right? Mm -hmm. You're not hitting this move, you don't really care about this move. You shouldn't mm -hmm. really go for it. Look at how long you're in place. He's able to get his entire dare off and then side light you while you're doing that mm -hmm. end light because you missed it, right? That's a long time mm -hmm. and it's really locking you in. Uh, okay. I'll compare it to how I play hammer. And like you said, hammer's not your main weapon, your guns and I mean, gauntlets and sword art, but mm -hmm. uh, if you have it in your hand, I'm going to show you what you're doing wrong with it. So, yeah. Uh, compared to my hammer, I don't go for a lot of end lights because. Even though Hammer is one of the bigger weapons or whatever, uh, Brawlhall is a game where free movement is your, going to always be your best friend. That's why weapons like Katars, where their abilities keep them moving, like Katar Dare and Sidelight, are good mm -hmm. for them. Like you saw a Sidelight and end up off stage, so it's hard for you to punish. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with every weapon. Hammer Sidelight is going to be your best friend. Carrying your, your momentum with Nair is going to be your best friend. Doing an end light while standing still, while he's not near you, is the opposite of what you're looking for. Okay. Okay, free win, I guess. Yeah, and that's one thing too. Like, uh, I know my hammer needs to get better because a lot of my openers rely on uh, my gauntlets. Okay. Well, so right here, this just looks like a mechanical error, but it's just gonna cost you some damage, right? You get the read there, and uh, you're actually just slightly too slow on this to where it gives it some them out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of fucking you at the same time, mm -hmm. excuse my language, but because he ends up a bit too far for the Nair to hit mm -hmm. and it lets him slide out, which is just like a thing with gauntlets. If mm -hmm. in a perfect world, it kind of pulls him in, but you can see how that one's pushing him out, but you should still be able to get it if you're a bit faster, especially since he has no dodge. Mm -hmm. but that's fine. It's not a big deal. It was actually a good read that you went for. So side light and he dodges the same again and as a player dodge you should be in. keeping track of yeah. dodges that's the second time you've hit him with Danny's dodged in so you can expect him to be dodging in a lot that was a risky spot dodge but he missed spaces of set so that's fine you get the down light there uh i've talked to a lot of gauntlet players and a lot of gauntlet players do still like down light there like i'll talk to santi and mm -hmm. I don't know if he likes down light there but i know boomy doesn't like down light there and i know i don't like down light there i know sandstorm still does down light there because mm -hmm. it also has a lot of options on, so like Sandstorm's gauntlet character is Mordex and uh, mm -hmm. what's it called? Onyx, right? So when he does downlight there, it's because he gets to do downsig after or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. I think a character like Core, especially, is going to benefit a lot more from you just doing the downlight side light. Because uh, mm -hmm. downlight there, it's a, you get your damage off, that's cool, right? You, you get to this, you just get your damage. You can look, he dodged in again, by the way, but you can look to catch that, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. With stuff like Mordex, you're looking for a down sig or Onyx's sigs, right? It's always stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, on Core, I think you get a lot of value if you downlight and sidelight. Even though mm -hmm. it's less damage than the dare, the follow-ups are always there. And uh, Core has some stuff with like GC down sig and catching dodges. So it's yeah. always going to be valuable to look at all the options. I think, especially on a weapon like Gauntlet's, doing something like this taking that damage mm -hmm. doesn't mean much because you really just took your string weapon and did like a basic hammer hit with it right whereas mm -hmm. hammer hits a combo and it's already more than that so looking for these big things these high damage rewards that come with your weapon is always going to be good for you i know Phazon, uh when i played against him he still is a person that goes for down my side light and he tries mm -hmm. to read off of that so a lot of things that are possible. It depends how you want to pull out your weapon. Uh, I know some people do like the more combo-based playstyle, but I think mm -hmm. if you're going to play a combo-based playstyle, don't play a string-based weapon, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, after missing that, that wasn't a bad end light, but you just kind of whiff, and then uh, this is kind of messy because you know that he, you just used your dodge and he has priority to follow you down. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not going to wake up, right? 
So hear this out. If you're not going to wake up like a GC wake up move, right? Mm -hmm. You need to just go. And what I mean by that is you dodge here, and then your first instance is to turn back around and go hit a person running at you. If mm -hmm. you you have no dodge, there's no hit box out, there's no priority out. So after a moment like this where you've gone hit and you have dodged, because right here you can GC down there, right? And he would have mm -hmm. actually ran into it because he dashes forward, right? And yeah. that's a different thing. That's completely separate. Okay. If you want to go for GCs, you can, but you give up the space here. You use your dodge and you do you're done now. So okay. don't try to switch up your mindset. Don't go, okay, I'm going to get out of here and then randomly go, actually, I might hit him because now you see how he actually hits you out of your move. And uh, okay. that's a downright stare if you want it. Instead, he goes for the mix up. But I'm not gonna yeah. talk about so that. if I'm going to disengage, like just yeah. disengage. If you're going to disengage, don't try to do think about it twice. Okay. Yeah. You're not, you're not disengaging and then immediately while you're disengaging, while you have nothing up, going back into him. That just won't work. He already went past you. He has more priority over the approach. Okay. So this entire sequence is kind of weird because uh, it's it's not very clear, right? So mm -hmm. this GC sidelight there is fine, and then you immediately try to rush back in with uh, an end light. And I will tell you that patience is always a key in raw hollow. When you find yourself throwing out moves like this, back to back to back, down light, GC side light, Sarah, chase mm -hmm. end light, you're playing poorly, right? Uh, yeah. I'm not saying like, oh, let's just run away from people the whole time, but it's pretty clear that when you're putting out moves like this, back to back, it's not a good idea. And that's why most of them miss with nothing happening, but then you find yourself rushing back in because you never take that second to stop and think, oh, what, am, what can I actually do here? Right, because if you if you stopped and thought for yourself for a second, you would have realized that this guy is going to Sarah again, right? The Sarah's already coming out. Your end light hasn't come out yet, but you it's close. I'm not expecting you to react to this Sarah engine. Just don't end light, right? But mm -hmm. in the first place, don't end light because he has a longer range weapon than you. He's pretty far from you. To force your way into here is pretty is a lot harder than it seems, right? So mm -hmm. that's where the waiting and thinking comes in. Uh, a lot of times when someone's in the air in a disadvantaged state like this. This is your chance to create opportunity. You just kind of sit down and he either now has to come, he's either going to come into you or disengage. And disengaging is fine. It just resets and you guys can fight again. But when you mm -hmm. force an approach like this, you just leave yourself open to get hit by whatever he just did, right? Okay. Let's say he goes for that stare and you waited a second, you get to punish him for free, right? You download yeah. and you do whatever you want after. Uh, let's okay. say he doesn't go for the stare, Okay, that's fine. Nothing happened to you. You're not losing too much here, right? Uh, mm. But that's the thing. You tried to force something and it ended up with you losing. There's no real position here where you force anything because of mm -hmm. the angle you're playing at. Uh, a weapon is as strong as what it can do and what angles it has, right? Mm. Let's see. You went for the end light, which is straight. He's going to stare you out. You go for the side light. It's not going to reach him. And then he's going to nair you out or stare you out. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just looking at this to look at what you could have possibly done here to get a hit off. You could have jump sared, but that is very committal and takes a, a while to actually happen, right? You're probably not going to see that happen. Not to mention, mm -hmm. he's not actually out of jumps, so he can react to your jump with his own jump. The Sarah comes out, he hits you back, right? So mm -hmm. it's just a thing of rock, paper, scissors, but in reality, you're not really in a position to play rock, paper, scissors. You're playing rock, paper, scissors with no hands, basically. Yeah, you don't really need to do anything here. You're not in a winning position. He has priority over you because he's in the air, and gauntlets are a low priority weapon in general, right? Gauntlets' mm -hmm. strengths come in the priority of downlight and the speed of all his other moves. It's not really going to be high priority otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, that was weird, but I don't think it mattered because it's like that's an in the moment thing. You don't want to look too hard on things that are just like small. But yeah. then you can see yourself kind of putting out damage again because you do this, and it's like. What what was uh, <laughs> the read for? You know, like maybe he dodges up. But uh, that's kind of yeah, either that or jump or something. There. I don't know. But it's not a terrible idea. It's just different. It's yeah. very risky, and I don't <laughs> think the reward is that great. Uh, yeah, you hit that down stick. He's not really gonna die. I guess it's some damage, and that's fine. Damage is always good. But there there are harder reads to go for on that dodge up, right? Like if mm -hmm. he dodges up here. Like you think he will, because you're expecting him to end up where, like around 
high enough for these to hit at least. So probably mm -hmm. like around here. Side light does will hit there if you delay it right, and then mm -hmm. you can get the recovery. He's at the top of the map. You can chase him down, go for another recovery. You have good priority over him with all that, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, here's the thing with uh, just going for this. It leads to you being open for this, right? Sidelight yeah. doesn't lead to you being open. So I'm not saying that this is a bad read. I'm saying that this is a bad punish. Okay. Because you you want to read this like you did. That's fine. I I agree with this read. It's just a read. Reads are fine. The punish mm. is too strong, and the reward for the punish is not worth it. And we see that. Interesting. Uh, okay, so you do this a lot, and I pointed out earlier with the end lights, but just relax. When you miss a move like this, it's not time to throw out another move. It, it just okay. really isn't. Just reset. Yeah, just take it to a second, and then realize what's going to happen next. Because if you didn't side sit here, he still would have dared, and then you could have sidelighted him. That's some damage for you right there, right? Mm -hmm. like you, can, you can see he's already in his dare. Maybe the side sig was to punish the dare, but you're really far from him, which mm -hmm. is the same, the same thing. Take a second and think... Because if you're doing things too fast, your spacing's off, right? Like mm -hmm. let's say, let's say, because realistically, this is a, this is the same punish as a side light. You're going, you're hitting the same area. This takes a bit longer to start up, does a bit more damage, blah blah blah, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is, you did it too fast because you didn't take time to think, which is always going to be the case for stuff like that. You always need to take time to just stop and think and. Uh, uh, I bring this up a lot when I'm coaching other people because it's kind of, th that's the difference, right? When you look mm -hmm. at yourself and someone that is better than you, it's not really the combos because as we've already gone over, you can do most of them, right? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's how fast they can process things that mm -hmm. matter and then actually put it in the game correctly. Because you're probably thinking, he's I'm going to punish this dare, but you thought about punishing the dare and then you didn't realize where to actually stand to punish the dare. So you just mm -hmm. sidestep anyway, right? So like it would have been good if I like spaced it properly, but like I didn't. Yeah, the side sig is good because let's look at it. Uh, play by play, right? Mm -hmm. He hits the dare here. You already you saw your side sig after the dare, so you already know he's daring. He mm -hmm. hits the ground with it. Let's say you're here. This mm -hmm. is hitting him, right? He's still in recovery frames right now. He's yeah. not out of it yet. If you're here, this is hitting him, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's the thing. You back up, but you and you go for your move, but you didn't give yourself time to think about that move. Okay. So you didn't hit it because you're spacing it correctly because you're rushing yourself. So, mm -hmm. and when I say uh, time to think, it's a lot harder than it sounds because it's not like if you're thinking too much, you run into a thing where you're not actually doing anything because you're constantly thinking about your next move. You're constantly thinking about what's gonna happen, right? Okay. So you need to find that middle ground, that perfect spot where it's like, okay, this is these are all my options. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But you're not missing. You're not thinking too fast to where you're misspacing. And you're not thinking too slow to where you're not actually doing anything. Because by the time you've thought about what you want to do here, he's already moved somewhere else and done something else. So now you have to rethink about what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would recommend you don't dodge down against Qataris ever, no matter what. Um... So this is just a little hammer thing. So right here, flip your recovery always, just because uh, it's better to have coverage while you go towards the map, because I'm not gonna be honest with you, this recovery wasn't gonna hit him regardless unless you got closer to him. Uh, if you wanted to go towards this side and then angle it, the recovery to hit here, because I don't know mm -hmm. if you know the shape of hammer recovery's hitbox, but it's like this. It's, it's like, like a little behind, yeah. yeah it's like a, like, up left or whatever so you mm -hmm. want to usually flip yourself so it covers this because uh, you're gonna see here in a second that this goes up here and it's covering like this as you can see right so mm -hmm. usually you want to cover this so that you can get to the map safely but mm -hmm. uh, you I'm saying this because you're not going to hit him regardless uh, you need to be higher up to hit him with this and then it's mm -hmm. like debatably fine I would still recommend you pull it to this side and flip it Mm -hmm. If you were trying to hit him, you should hit him from this side and flip it. But this is like this needs to be closer to him anyway, regardless. Like you, you need to be spacing this better, regardless. But mm -hmm. space it, plan it to flip, basically. Uh, this is fine. Uh, this was another thing I wanted to look at. Don't dare like this because uh, first of all, another thing 
this is coming from this direction, right? He's on this mm -hmm. direction, so you should be flipping this as well. But okay. I don't think you should dare on hammer without jumping because daring on hammer carries your momentum. That's why when you jump dare on stage, you keep going up, right? You jump mm -hmm. and the hitbox comes and you keep going up. That means if you just dare like you do here, right? You fall really far down. You just keep going down, as you can see, right? You end up, you see how far you end up down. So yeah. let's say instead of recovering immediately, he just stared you because you can react to this right mm -hmm. now. And he just stares you, you die, he goes back up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like, uh, just not smart to dare like that. And th now let's look at how dangerous that was and let's talk about the reward for that, all right? The reward for that was 16 damage, okay? Mm -hmm. And he gets back to the map. So not really, not really. yeah, <laughs> not really smart. That there is good. Uh, this looked like what I'm talking about with the, thinking too much or too long because mm -hmm. you dash in you see where he is you don't react to this to punish it it's like you're trying to figure out what to do next and you know it's a nair again which is why you do the nair but it takes you too long to figure it out by that time he's already moved past you mm -hmm. and uh, you're on the next phase of reaction i will say that you need to this is this is a this is a winning position this is a winning state in the game okay mm -hmm. so watch this you've got your nair hammer nair good all right Mm -hmm. He has no way to contest you going for another one. And this is what uh, taking your lead looks like, okay? You have just hit Nair here. He is here now. He will be out of recovery by the time you jump back up. You go up, and you forfeit that momentum to land again. Don't give up. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. You go up again. You can reset your jump on the platform if you want. You don't really mm -hmm. have to. It's better so you can have more jumps. But you jump Nair again. Now the guy has to dodge out the way. He can't hit you because he just dodges. We saw earlier when you dodge away and go for a hit, it's kind of bad, right? It punishes mm -hmm. you. You got punished for that. So he dodges out of the way like that, okay? And he's in the air on Katars, and you have hammer nair to your ability. He just avoided one. You got another one queued up. That's fine. That's mm -hmm. what winning looks like. You have to continue. If you are winning, do not stop winning. Continue winning. If you stop like this, taking time to think about what you want to do next, uh, it's not good for you, right? You're wasting time, and, he, and now the game is back to even. Now you, you're both playing again, where you were in a winning position. I will say that this is one of those things where it's you need to find the balance of am I thinking too much or am I not thinking enough, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is because you hit this nair, and now you need to go, oh, I'm gonna nair. I need I need to jump up there and nair again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, don't think too fast because now, like, let's say. You shouldn't have nared again, right? It's just like mm -hmm. oh, I thought. To, I thought I had to nair, and then I did it. But you saw. You thought you had to nair, and then didn't do anything. So now you're taking too long to think. It's the middle ground that's important. You mm -hmm. need to realize that you can do it. You need to realize that you want to do it, and then you need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I will be honest. That is about like seventy percent of Brawlhalla. So uh, because do and then not to. Yeah, because the combos are not hard and. Uh, the spacing is hard, but you get better with spacing as you play. And as you mm -hmm. realize that you are misspacing things, it's that knowing when to put out your moves, when to continue your pressure, and when to just give up sometimes. Because sometimes mm -hmm. you just do give up. You do back away and let him uh, do what he needs to do because if you try to contest it, it will be worse for you, right? So mm -hmm. right there was a time where you need to continue your winning. You, you, you had a good spot, and you had to go on with it. Good down this air. This is fine. Uh, you should never really try to hit a person that's in iframes because you can't really do it. Uh, if he was also spacing better, he would have punished you for that dare. And mm -hmm. you can't hit him, so I don't even understand why you went for her, right? Okay, so uh, I will say that you sidelighted him knowing he had a dodge still and then you went for the nair. You should never do that, like ever. It's actually just not worth it because uh, you hit the nair. And let's say their brain wasn't working for some reason. Now it hopefully is. So you're not going to follow up the nair. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. hit the side light nair, they dodge the next thing. Okay. So it's not really worth it. But let's say that from the start they dodge, right? You side light, then they dodge. Then you punish that dodge. That's even more valuable damage, right? Side light okay. nair, they dodge. Side light, read the dodge, nair, they have no dodge, continue on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think you did it again here. 
Okay, well, you did. That was fine. Okay, but you did do. Actually, you can't hear it because uh, sound is not on for you. But mm -hmm. you, this is a side light. This isn't running. This is a side light. You started up a side light. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing where I said before. You dodged and then you immediately you tried ran. To you tried to attack him again with a low priority move. So okay. it's just him walk up and hit you. Nothing happens. Okay. Um, these aren't bad dodges, but you're leaving yourself really vulnerable. And then uh, your first instinct is to go for something like this, and it hits him because he's just kind of whiffing in lights. But it's kind of it's kind of sketchy and dangerous. Okay. Let's never do that again. So side light, Nair. You have his dodge, GC down light, Nair again, recovery, or uh, Sarah will all be true. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second because this uh, does not work, especially not at white, mainly because they can kind of, they don't even have to jump. He like literally moved out of it. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like a waste of all is of all that you got. I think I meant to recover, I just uh, misinputted. Like the chase dodge and the uh, K. Okay, well, I mean, the recovery's not going to work there, so it doesn't matter. Okay. That's not even a bad thing to do. That GC Ensic is good for you. Okay, that was, uh, looks like a butt, like, mis a mistake was made or something, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, act yeah, it's a thing with falling there. It's like, you kind of just, like, forget that you are falling when you do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see what this last stock looks like for you. Side layer. Okay, so yeah, this is why you don't dodge out against Katars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Katars' biggest advantage is, since you said this was like one of the worst matchups for you, right? Katars' mm -hmm. biggest advantage over you will be on the ground. It won't be in the air because they can't string you in the air right they can kind of carry you around but the moves in the air hit too hard for you to be followed up upon uh, mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is if they hit you with sair they're not going to hit you again because you're going to go too far right if they hit mm -hmm. you with nair at later healths they're not going to hit you again because you're going to go too far same thing with recovery dare maybe but for the most part in the air is fine it's it's you're going to get punished but it's fine because katars are a read based weapon anyway so that means that they, they can punish any dodge you do right but let's look mm -hmm. at the most valuable dodge to punish. It's this one. Because he gets to send light, and then he gets down light, and then he nares you. Uh, he Or he could do side light, then he would've gone down light there, and then reset it again. You mm -hmm. see the how much valuable, the, how much more valuable the damage is on the ground rather than the air, right? That's yeah. why you want to avoid dodging back to the ground because you will take the most damage for that dodge. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, it's fine, like, it's not, not that it's fine, but uh it's just a read at the end of it all right like let's say he decided that he wanted to just recover you anyway that's fine because that's he re he read you wrong but when he reads mm -hmm. you right there's too much damage that you take that's okay. why you should go for any of the other options that are in the air unless you've been dodging in the air the entire time then maybe you can mix it up with the ground and dodge but it's not really worth it you can't really punish mm -hmm. it okay um it's fine but okay, so uh, this is fine. He doesn't punish you as much as he could have. This jump there is backwards. It, you, it quite literally cannot hit him. Mm -hmm. And then he's pointing that out. You should... Uh, I don't know what your controls are set to or what they're like, but you should literally always be flipping hammer dare every single time. Uh, okay. You sh like, every same, like, hammer dare and recovery should always be going towards the opponent. That way okay. you, you stop your momentum and actually you can't hit him because the hitbox comes out there. So him being here and the hitbox coming out there does not work for you. Him okay. being here and the hitbox coming out here will hit him. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So uh, against guitars, this guy wasn't using guitars to like the worst of it, right? So it, it's mm -hmm. not like uh, as bad as it could be. But against guitars, I will tell you that your biggest weakness will be actually being on the ground and trying to do grounded moves i for the most part when i play against guitars just jump the entire time because mm -hmm. uh in the air they're not getting rid of that they're hitting you for 12 damage it's not mm -hmm. nothing right side light on the ground has high priority so you don't really want to do that and what i mean by that is uh I, stuff like this is not your best friend when they're in the air like this and you're going for grounded moves like that that's just free free hits on you right so mm -hmm. against guitars, I would recommend you back away more, but not mm -hmm. to the point where you're like 
<clears throat> running out of stage basically like i'm not okay. saying that you're just like running away till you find yourself here but you need to give yourself room so that they can miss these dares uh, later in the game, we see when you try to side stick him, he misses another dare. Stuff like that, mm. basically. That's why I mean by back away. Give him the room okay. to miss. Uh, because what a lot of people do with guitars is because they know they have that priority. Uh, I know Wrench likes to do this a lot. Is they'll push, they'll pressure you off to where uh, you feel like you have run out of space. You have mm. nowhere else to go but off stage, and that's where you go. Yeah, okay, and you go off stage. That's fine. That mm. doesn't matter. Uh, because it's better than eating damage, right? So, mm -hmm. if you find yourself fighting guitars and they have this advantage state over you where you're on the ground and you don't know what to put out, you're playing Hammer, especially because Hammer is Hammer's biggest weakness is, is that position, even against Sword mm -hmm. and stuff. If someone's holding diagonally against you and your name is not Cassidy or Core and Sig, then you do mm -hmm. have to back up because you can't hit them out of it, right? Uh, okay. So that's fine. Just back up. Give yourself that room. Give yourself that time to think, which we also talked about. Not too much time. Don't be waiting for stuff to happen and okay. uh you should be better off but uh putting out too many moves and whiffs is literally the only way guitars punish you and uh this is another thing to think about and it's important to realize this because when guitars hit you and you dodge away and you d aren't getting hit again right i'm not saying they read you or they string you when they just hit you they're hitting you for like at max 24 damage okay mm -hmm. so you hit them back for 30 at least on hammer on a combo okay mm -hmm. uh gauntlets are different obviously because you're still dealing with different numbers but it's that's that's the point basically the point is the damage shipping back and forth is going to usually be in your favor so you can play that slow game out and you can look for these one hits because mm -hmm. a side light on you is more damage than a side light on them right they hit you with a okay. side light you live to see another day. You hit them with a the sidelight, they just took 20 damage, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the end lane, stuff like that. That's why I don't see why you are so pressed for hits. Going for uh, what I'm gonna look at is end light, dash, sidelight, end light. You're just putting out moves, when in reality, you slow it down, and you're always going to be doing more damage than them as long as you give yourself that time to get those hits. Okay. Let's look at this one. We'll just look at them in order then. Three, two, one, brawl. Alright. Uh, so, let's look at openings because your last opening was a uh, recovery into dare. Mm -hmm. And then a GC highlight. The GC highlight was the only weird part. Openings are always different. Okay. So, openings are whatever because. You never know what they're gonna do. This guy did the same thing you did, which is dashing back and forth. Which I will say, don't do that because uh, it does nothing. I yeah, can't, like I remember you, you, uh, you guys are both remember, not doing anything right now. So <laughs> yeah, I remember you talked about that in um, one of the other coaching vids with the uh, the brand I think on your yeah. YouTube. All you are literally doing is wasting time because uh, you just wasted like three dashes worth of frames to do nothing. Mm -hmm. If he wanted to, if he wanted to go towards to you. He would have hit you on that back dash because back dash has a recovery mm -hmm. but he does it too so it doesn't matter but let's say you didn't do that then you could have punished him for it right like it's just like why are you why are you doing nothing why are mm -hmm. you there's nothing happening when you're dashing like this it's not like a bait or a thought process or anything mm -hmm. uh you then go for your recovery and then you're there immediately which is uh this one is weird because the last one was the dare was at least towards them this one, you go too high and then you recover backwards. This is mm -hmm. forfeiting the weapon for... No, you're not going to hit him with that there. Uh, you get this punish anyway because he decides to land for free, which is messy from mm -hmm. him. He shouldn't land like this. He should be spacing you out considering you picked up spear and you have an arm, right? But that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, this there doesn't make sense. And this wasn't even what I was going to talk about, though. What I was talking about, what I was wanting to talk about is uh, openings and when you decide whether you want the weapon or you want to hit them right uh mm -hmm. the dashing is nothing it, it never will be anything because uh, it has nothing to do with either of them dashing delays you being able to go get the weapon because you are dashing instead of going to the middle of the map for the weapon right and uh it delays you going to hit them as well because it doesn't matter uh, and you only did this this game so i don't really care i'm not going to keep talking about it but yeah uh when you you decide that you want to get the weapon when the weapon is your goal then you need to go for the weapon. And I'm not saying that the weapon will always be your goal. Sometimes you do want to hit them. Mm -hmm. But hitting them like this doesn't really work. Uh, I know 
Cody has a opening where he, and he does that a lot, he jumps really high, and then he dares the weapon, because if you don't know he's going to do that, uh, you can't really do anything about it, and he will get mm-hmm. the weapon, and if you go for the weapon, he will dare you, right? Okay. He goes really high up because the weapon will spawn here, and he will dare into the weapon and pick it up. You dare really low, and it leads you past the weapon. But let's say you go to contest him getting that weapon, he dares you out of it. Uh, but if you know you if you know he's gonna do this, you let him dare, and then you recover him. It's a punish, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just like a re- uh, you know what they're gonna do type of thing. But the point is uh, knowing whether your goal is to fight or for the weapon, and doing something that matters for that goal. A lot of Brawlhalla is like based on what your what your plan here is. What are what are you doing? Like what is your purpose here, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And your purpose there was not very clear. Another unarm and inverse is always good, like I said before, so. Oh, you get some this game, which I didn't realize, but okay. Yeah. Uh, right there, it takes a lot to be able to react this fast for stuff, but this is an end late. Uh, and especially oh, yeah. because you've been hugging him so tight the entire time, I will say that almost always after you do a gauntlet move and it's a whiff, you should end light unless you can clearly see that they are a space from you, right? So let's say, mm-hmm. l- let's look at the stair. If you stop the stair, like let's say you started here or whatever, and you stopped right here, right? Mm-hmm. And you landed here, then it's a down light. Mm-hmm. In almost every other scenario, and you'll be able to, you should be able to react to these, it will be an end light because end light starts up so fast and mm-hmm. it just has a good priority on stacked, okay? Okay. Excuse me. You want to almost always be looking for end lights like that. Down light. That was bad, but okay, you hit him, I guess. Uh, this is bad because it doesn't make sense what you're going for. Maybe you could explain what you're going for, but I just misinputted the uh, the uh, down light there. Okay. And so it was a chase dodge too fast, mm. and then I guess it worked out, and I just reacted. Yeah. So let's look at what you got though. You got his dodge, and you got the end light. I don't like sig reads because they're really hard to do, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say here that he has no dodge, so there's no way for him to get past you fast enough. And what I mean by that is, you see how he's jumping? Mm-hmm. His options are to jump straight up, because like I said, there is no way for him to get past you like that. Mm-hmm. His options are to jump like this, or to go off stage, mm-hmm. right? Uh, mm-hmm. Going off stage is a different story. You've created a 50-50 for yourself where it's not really a 50-50 because he could go further off stage, but you've mm-hmm. created a situa- for, for, situation for yourself where you're either fighting someone off stage with limited options or he's going straight up. Uh, mm-hmm. And what I will say for this is, don't end sig backwards. And uh, this is easier to look at in the moment by yourself and go, oh, I should have end sig forward, right? Mm-hmm. But let's look at how you see it in game while it's happening, okay? And how mm-hmm. someone else would see this. I hit him here, he has no dodge, I know that. You, you see this in game as it's happening. This is an mm-hmm. after the fact thing, okay? You should be keeping track mm-hmm. of dodges. As soon as you hit this and you go, he has no dodge, okay? What, what, mm-hmm. what will I do next? I will keep in mind that he has no dodge, and whatever I do will be a guaranteed hit. Like, if you end sig right now, right here, he's jumping into the end sig, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He has no way of getting past you. You don't need to be in the next, you don't need to be looking at a replay to realize that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's stuff where it's like, oh, I should have done this here because you're looking at a replay. This isn't one of those things. You should have known he had no dodge and gone forward rather than backwards. He has no way to get past you. Okay. One sec. Sorry about that, my mom got hung. Uh, so yeah, just it's uh it's kind of like the 
It's like a mix of knowing what to do that is correct. If you remember what we're talking about, it's a mix of doing what we're uh, doing, what's correct, and keeping your win on. So here you saw that he had no dodge, and you did a good job of keeping of continuing winning. Like the same with the hammer and everything else, I'm about, right? Where you <laughs> you continue going because you have to keep going, but you uh, kept going and went and did the wrong move thing, rather okay. than the right move, right? So what do you think like Nair or Sair or something like that? You just answer like four. No, I'm saying like in like if this happens again, like to Nair or Sarah, like if they jump out and don't have a dodge. No, you just end sig like you literally do oh, it you end sig forward, that's it. Okay. Like you end sig like let's look at what we're looking at here. This is really annoying because the Jake sound is playing over and over again. Okay. You're going like this and you're going to end up here and end sig like this while he goes up mm -hmm. straight. He has no dodge, he can't escape anything, okay? Okay. Realistically, you end sig like this and you see how he gets hit by it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I mean by NC4. One second. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's what I mean by N64. I'm not talking about like, like yeah, if you want to look at like every option you could have done, because mm -hmm. what I'm saying is you didn't even choose the bad option, right? Mm -hmm. Your N64 is fine. It's just in the wrong direction. It's just not okay. going to hit him. Uh, but if you want to look at other options you could have done, then yeah, uh, let's say he goes off stage. He has no dodge, so you just literally chase him off in ground pound, and you can steer it, mm -hmm. so it's fine. You, you have all your gems still, so you can get back on easily. Uh, if he decided to go like up a bit higher, then you it, it, you just jump recovery him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go for a nair, but I feel like the nair is pointless. This is the nair is pointless because uh, it sends him off stage and then he dodges whatever you try to do. Maybe you can try to get a read off the nair, but it's like messy and you're gonna run out of jumps too. Uh, okay. That's why I would go for recovery or Sarah. But Sarah is kind of hard because you have to jump twice to get at it. What did you yeah. order in that big box? <clears throat> okay. Alright, I think we're good to move past this then. Yeah. Okay. Nothing really happened there, it's fine. This was a. Uh... So you back away and then you start dashing and he just like walks at you. If you're dashing like this, you're gonna end up in recovery frames with the back dashes. This is the. I don't get why people do this ever because. You know, this is the equivalent of standing still, except worse, because you're in frames. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't do it. You, like, if I sent you a tournament, I think the only person you would see backdash is Kostelix, because he, mm -hmm. he backdashes back and forth for some reason. And everyone else I know hates backdashing, because it, mm -hmm. it's just re it's literally recovery frames. You are, you are giving yourself recovery frames, because most things will still hit you. Like, I don't, so I don't understand, uh, what this is. This is, this is literally the equivalent of standing still plus frames. It's like st stun. It's literally stun. So, mm -hmm. really, like, you can see how you backdash, and because of that, the weapon throw just hits you, and then you get hit again. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to do it. And when I say it's the equivalent of standing still, I mean, if you want to not move from this position, which is what dashing like this is for, like this first backdash is just like a, a, it's whatever. You probably meant to dodge and you were on the ground, so you dash. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Then you dash in and then back again. That's not doing anything for you. At that point, mm -hmm. literally just stand still. Mm -hmm.
Okay, that was a lot of nothing, and I would recommend you don't do stuff like that. You keep your weapon. Uh, after the weapon throw, you pick it back up, and then you can pressure him off stage because he's now at a disadvantage and just uses his dodge, I'm assuming. Yeah, he dodged right there, and now he's off stage. Uh, you pick your weapon up and you go with it. You don't do whatever that is because it's impossible for you to hit it, right? Mm -hmm. There was really no way for you to hit him here because you see where he is. Now you see the dodge. What is your next reaction? to hit very far from him. That was the equivalent of you just downside, down sitting where you stood, right? It's not really gonna mm -hmm. do anything. Okay. This guy's doing a lot of nothing, but it's like bad nothing where it's like, he's just like literally not doing anything. No. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is figure out a consistent way that you want to go towards him. And I think he's doing a lot of nothing to try to figure out what you're doing, which is why he starts winning so hard. Hmm. Good punish. Uh, I will say that the first couple dodges were bad or something. I don't understand what just happened. End light. End light. And then you dodge down. Okay, that was kind of weird. So, that's fine. And then you get the same read you always get. Uh, yeah, I think you're not doing this fast enough or something, because you should be getting okay. this. Maybe, uh, just do, what you can do is, I'm gonna sneeze again, but what you can do is the exact same situation in uh, mm -hmm. training mode. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I can hear it. Yeah. I can hear it coming. You can set it up the exact same way. So have him hit an end light and then have it dodge into you, right? Mm -hmm. Set it to dodge the opposite of what you're facing and then hit the side light and then nair. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to actually look at it because like, I'm, I'm serious that you should not be... Uh, Missing it that hard, so. Okay, so, yeah, you hit this. Oh, well, he's gonna be too far, and I don't feel like moving, but whatever. The things I do. And then he moves back because he just loves to disrespect me. <laughs> Oops. Alright, so this is what we're working with. Yeah, so you, you should be getting this if you're doing it fast enough. Uh, it's kind of weird that you're not. Okay. But yeah. Uh, I don't even know what you would do after it because the dodge is in like a weird spot. I mean, technically these ones are grounded dodges, so like, they have it back. Uh, some of the people I'm seeing you hit are in the air, so I will look at the difference. Okay. Yeah, it's about the same thing. Uh, in game, you get that down late because people don't dodge fast enough again, but yeah. It's like, it's whatever. But you should be getting the nair. The nair is uh, something you should be getting. Uh, okay. At least you should be getting a recovery. You're definitely doing it correctly, so. Okay. Okay, so I wanna look at something here, which is uh, basically like your position and how you went from being up orange to losing the game, right? Yeah. And usually when you get the first stock or a stock, your next thought is to go, okay, I'm in a lead, I'm in an advantage, and I have to play for that. That guy has to do a considerable amount of damage and then kill me. And that's not as easy as it sounds on Mirage, who plays two weapons that don't hit that heavy and they're based off of reads. Like, Spear needs to hit like a full three hit to even up this damage, right? So uh, that's that's good for you. So you, you see that, you realize that, you go in your head, okay, here's the game plan. Uh, I would recommend, for future reference, that you keep hammer on your start 
And the reason you keep hammer on your start is because hammer on white gets end light side light. It gets stomp side light end light. It gets a bunch of, uh, if you've seen the hammer guide, it gets mm -hmm. a bunch of combos on white that are absurdly broken and do 40 damage for no reason. Mm -hmm. So you, on white, you do keep hammer just because I know gauntlets are your main weapon, but I'm just giving you like a tip. Okay. But, oh, after you, so yeah, after you miss the snare, you don't really do this. This is too fast. Like I said, you're playing too fast. You're, okay. you're like swinging at the air here. Yeah, you're still like, you're just swinging at the air. You dare him, and then you immediately rush off in ground pound, and in reality, you see how free this ground pound actually is, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just didn't like run off, if you, yeah. if you waited like one more second to space it, you would have been fine. Like, don't wait too long to the point where you're like thinking, oh, should I ground pound? That's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, wait enough time to go, oh, I should ground pound, and this is where mm -hmm. I should stand to ground pound. Okay. I hate him so much, I wish he would leave me alone. <laughs> good end sig. Miss the Sarah, though. That was not bad. This is actually really good. This into, into the Sarah was nice. If you did the Sarah earlier, it would have hit him. Okay, so you've lost that stock, but honestly, it was a good attempt that got you killed. I'm a mm -hmm. fan of what you did there. You pick up your weapon, which is fine. Side light. Yeah, as a uh, as I mentioned, side light. You wait for the read, then you go for the nair. I'll look at that with you in uh, the room after. Okay. The lab, if you will, and then uh, it's always going to be better than just getting a side light nair. Okay. And then you start putting out a lot of hitboxes again. I don't know if you're if you're seeing this or noticing this. Miss the nair, down a across the map, then back up, down light, back up again, down light, even though now yeah, at this point he's either half a map away from you or in the air. You just went for the second one. Just kind of feeling yourself. GC side light to come back. I'm rocking with it too. I kind of vibe with I, I vibe with the moves coming out. End light, dare, nair nothing. Yep. And at this point you can see how little moves he's putting out, right? Like mm -hmm. if we want to count these, let's see. That's your two moves, three moves, hits you once. One move, he equals it out. Two moves, three moves. And you, like, you're kind of keeping even, and then he hits you. And you were going for another move there, you can't hear it, because I can hear the startup of the nair. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, you can just see how many moves you're putting out, and none of them are going to hit, so it's not worth doing that to yourself. Dare, ground pound. Like, you just give, give yourself like a second, you know? That instinct wasn't bad. That one was. <laughs> I almost did a miss input thing. I don't. I don't know if I was like what I was thinking about that. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's just. I mean, it's not even too fast. That's just you did a nair, which is uh, he's like just recovery in here and he's dead. Aim it towards him. He just dies. Mm -hmm. But then, this is just sad. Because I don't know what to tell you that you did wrong, because he didn't really do anything. He just threw his mm -hmm. weapon at you, and you had no jumps left, and you had no dodge left, so you had to recovery. Mm -hmm. I will say that not the best choice of options of order that which you want to do moves out, but mm -hmm. here's the thing. You are losing here. You, you mm -hmm. already kind of lost, because if you recovery right now, this early, he throws his weapon anyway. Same thing happens, right? Mm -hmm. Uh... So there's no winning here. You, you you've kind of forfeited, and you're going to die if he's playing smart. Okay. But it's fine. Uh, this means this. I thought this game was a stomp, but it's really not. That was kind of unlucky, and uh, mm -hmm. he's one hit. But that means something really bad happens this stop. Probably probably that. That probably started it all. That would have been my yeah. Part of, yeah the game. So I will say that I did tell you that unarmed is fine, and you played in bursts. But when mm -hmm. you realize it's not working, you stop doing it because now okay. you've gone hit one. You you woke up uh, out of your frames. I will tell you that never ever ever wake up out of these. Mm -hmm. This is this is what you did earlier, and I told you that uh, it's not a good idea to try to hit people out of this right because mm -hmm. realistically they shouldn't get hit because they're invincible. Right mm -hmm. here, this spear should go through you, and then you should punish him after. Downlight mm -hmm. NSIG or whatever. Downlight GC NSIG. You know how to do that, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you get what I'm saying, though. Don't, don't waste your don't waste time while you're invincible. He can't hit you, mm -hmm. right? But you try to wake up out of it, and then you try to wake up out of it again, and then you GC again, right? Now you've eaten, like, five different hits. You're in orange, and then 
he could have killed you right there with an egg drop, but you're still putting out moves. You're playing way too fast. You're not thinking about anything you're doing. Another one for the home team. Yeah, like you can see, I think you can see yourself where this game kind of yeah. went. And yeah. how playing too fast is really going to always be your worst enemy. Yeah. I think I might have just been like nervous part of it, but also part of like a, just like a bad habit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say that that is like one of the most important things in the, the game. I would rather see someone. Uh, I don't know. The here it's it just depends who you are. Mm -hmm. Like there are people who would rather see whoever they're coaching play with confidence. Cause uh, I'll be honest with you, you look pretty confident here. Mm -hmm. To a stupid point, honestly, you you look okay. dumb, but you're confident at least. You you know you know you want to hit him, mm -hmm. but I would rather see you. Scared and thinking than doing whatever Mind this suit was. Yeah, because yeah. this looks like like blind arrogance. Like, oh, I'm going to hit him eventually. Like, I, I got to hit him eventually. But if you just stopped and went, you know what? I don't know what to do. Let mm -hmm. me try and figure it out. That is better. Some people don't like that. Some people say, okay, you're just doing nothing. So you're going to lose. You're just waiting to lose, right? Mm -hmm. But... Instead, you decide that instead of waiting to lose, you're just going to lose. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a, it's it's two views on how you play a game. Whether you're going to be aggressive and relentless and know what you want and go take mm -hmm. what you want, or whether you're going to accept the fact that some people are better than you and that you need extra time to beat them. You need to be smarter mm -hmm. to beat them, right? So okay. rushing yourself like this, getting and noticing that you're getting hit every single time is not very smart. We already talked about how. You put out a bunch of moves before you could even put one out, right? And now mm -hmm. we're looking at you literally wake up over and over again. And yeah, I feel like this isn't a common game. This isn't. Uh, hopefully, this is not a common occurrence, mm -hmm. right? But it is something that happened here, and you showed me the replay, so I'm telling you what you did wrong in the replay. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That was a clear. That was clear. It, it kind of obviously I don't know actually know what you were thinking or what you want to do, but this looks like there's a plan. It looks like you just want the weapon, so you go get it and then you hit him. Hopefully, you yeah. Go, okay, side light there, so you can get your free forward damage and then. I will say, I don't know what this guy's doing, but I will say that you should relax. Uh, the reason I say uh, relax and I don't know what this guy's doing is because of this right here where he jumps again, and then you side light him high in the air. This is a free jump nair for one because he wasted his mm -hmm. dodge. If you notice, uh, I think right here. No, he didn't waste his dodge, but he's not. He's jumping, so he's not going to dodge. It's more like mm -hmm. it. But uh, you can see how you've hit. You're still like playing really fast. You're not hitting mm -hmm. him. You're hitting nothing. Mm -hmm. You missed your side light, and then you end lighted while he's still in the air, right? Uh, you have an opportunity to catch his down him just like this. Like you do it right here. You catch him. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But don't waste this. Uh, this 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 frame like why are you doing this for you know mm -hmm. do the do the same thing you did but m take this out of it that way you're mm -hmm. more free you're less likely to get punished because realistically let's look at this you end right here he fast falls and it and there's you he could have punished that he doesn't mm -hmm. and you get this off of it. but i'm just i'm just showing you where it looks like you were playing too fast and where you need to relax right okay okay so there and flip your recovery that actually would have hit him. That wasn't bad. This was all pretty good. I like this. Flip your recovery though. As you can see, okay. you see what I'm talking about with the hitbox. It would have, if yeah. you flip it, that hits him. Open throw is fine. You're a big fan of the unarmed kit. <laughs> a really, really big fan of the unarmed kit. And and sticking backwards. I like interesting. Okay, how about we practice aiming the sigs at them? And also, right. do more than the end sig because the end sig requires them to jump. This the side sig here hits them, and it doesn't require them to jump. Uh, okay. But yeah. Okay. Side light. Um, this is you can react to this, and the reason I say you can react to this is because he doesn't do anything for a while. Like if you mm -hmm. nared there, it would have hit him. Uh. 
the thing is you sir on reaction but you can tell which way his dodge is going like you 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 could just hit him correctly so i'm just gonna say that that was a punish and how you would have punished it would have been up to you but just realize that you did sarah at nothing uh, okay this is really really hindering my viewing experience so in light you do the thing where you dodge away and then try to contest him which is the turnaround you didn't actually get a move out actually it looks like you started trying to get a highlight out but uh it's the turning around after you've dodged okay. like this especially against spear where they want your dodge and they want to continue carrying you on is not a good idea so after this dodge you kind of just back up a bit okay. like you're not out of stage yet if you back up a tiny bit rather than just turning around and going at him you would have been here this side mm -hmm. would have finished he would have been here you downlight him and then you get your hits off right mm -hmm. okay Yeah, I will say against Spear that Enlight is uh, Enlight is your friend, but you will always want to be stacked for it to be your friend. Uh, okay. Walking up to him like this and Enlighting is not your friend. Doing this with a downlight, way better. It would have actually probably worked. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I will talk about it when we go into training mode, because uh, I'll definitely look at it in training mode. So. I just spaced that wrong. A lot of things were wrong there. Uh, so, this, your best tool to punish this, this side is not terrible. It would have, this side stick you need to start up way earlier is the problem. It's too, I think it would have killed him, so I'm not going to say it wasn't worth it. it it's worth it, but mm -hmm. it's really hard. So let's, let's talk about if he was at lower health and wasn't going to die from it. You would have mm -hmm. punished this with just a side light because uh, it's more valuable, it's easier, it's less risky, it's higher chance of hitting, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's everything that should be going through your head when you go for something like this. And I talk, and I've already talked about what's going through your head and how fast it needs to go through your head, how fast mm -hmm. you can make a decision when you do something. And let me be clear again on what I mean by that. When mm -hmm. I do something, like let's look at me, when I do something, I go, what is the most damage here? What can I actually do? what will give me a good follow-up all of this right mm -hmm. and then i throw and then i go yes i'll do this this is the move i'll throw out and i've talked mm -hmm. about this in other coaching videos i do that all in well i mean light speed just because of how talented i am personally i'm not <laughs> expecting you to work at light speed or anything but uh mm -hmm. i do that all really fast i go i want to do this because then i'll do this and then this will happen and when you're playing against another really high level player he's doing the same thing so he's going i want to do this and then this will happen and then i can do this after it and he's going i'm going to do this and then this will happen and then you're constantly changing it because let's say what you wanted to do doesn't line up with what he actually did right mm -hmm. but your goal is always highest reward least risk highest chance of hitting right okay. that is always your goal no matter what no matter where he is that is your goal highest reward least risk high stress of hitting unless you're in like a situation where you're literally going for all or nothing because you have already lost the game or like, like let's say you're in white and they're in like you're in deep red and they're in white and it's like last game last mm -hmm. chance to win right like you have to win here and then you do some stupid shit where it's like hopefully this kills them yeah. and if it doesn't i i lost anyway that's the only time you want to do some, something like that right okay but usually you're looking for those criteria, highest reward, less risk, least risk, and then uh, best chance of hitting. So side light mm -hmm. is an easy punish for the spear and light. Side sig is a hard punish for it, right? That's mm -hmm. the difference between a soft punish and a hard punish. The thing is, a hard punish here is not actually bad because it would have killed him, right? I'm like, so I'm not telling you that this side sig was bad. Obviously, space it better and do it faster. You, like you already mentioned yourself, you could see it yourself that, oh, I spaced this wrong and I didn't do it fast <laughs> enough, right? But uh, in another world, you go for a side light there just because it's more valuable to you. Okay, that was not bad. Uh, I will say that I have a hard time hitting uh, down light after these, especially if they're mm -hmm. in the air because you can see how he lifts them a bit up and then he can jump. Mm -hmm. What you should go for is Sarah, mainly because he jumped, right? So side light and then jump Sarah. I know Boomy goes for that all the time. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of options that exist, and I, but I know Boomy likes to go for side lights there when they have no dodge because uh, just where they end up, especially when they're, if they're in the air. So it, it is very good. Uh, and yeah, that's just something to look at there. Yes, that was cool. Okay. 
So let's look at where you are. You have a slight lead, not enough to do anything with, but it's okay. You're resisting. That was a very bad missing put. I think you want to be on the ground so you can get your side light off. Mm -hmm. Unlucky. That was just bad. Okay, so uh, you get enlightened here. That's fine. You do your first stare, but it kind of just like. It's like, I don't know. I would. You could have lived here anyway, because just on circumstance, but it, that first stare was kind of a bad inventor because it was instantly. Like, if he just threw it right now, he would have died, okay? Okay. But he gives you some time, and you kind of put yourself in a bad position here where you turned around because now you can't commit to getting past it now you're going backwards and then it actually hits mm -hmm. you you because you're not going to go backwards fast enough because you, we're not going to look at this for too long because it hurts my eyes but you're not going to get back uh, back away from it fast enough because you have to turn first if you can't push in through that's your best op those are your best odds best odds of getting out of there okay hesitation is almost never your friend there's a difference between thinking and hesitation Hesitation is like thinking, except uh, you're too scared to actually do what you're thinking about. So it's just like, oh, but I'm thinking about it. Actual thinking is about like knowing what is possible and then going for what you have decided is the best. But if you're hesitant, you're just... He being hesitant is bad because uh, you're not even thinking anymore. You already know what you want to do if you're, if you're hesitant, right? Thinking yeah. is deciding what you want to do and then doing it, right? And hesitation is thinking about what you want to do. And then worried that you're wrong, but you're only think you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about what you're gonna do next. You're just you have what you're gonna do next, and then you're worried that you're going to mess up, so you don't do it, right? Yeah. Uh, when you've thought about something, you just do it, and then when you if it works or doesn't work, you think about the next thing. When you're hesitant, you don't do anything because you're stuck on one thing, continuously thinking, should I do this or not, right? Mm hmm. No weapon throw is weird. And these dodges are threatened. What the f- Okay, what did I do? Alright, so, let's start, because I wasn't looking. So, this weapon throw, <laughs> very bad, very weird. Uh, I get weapon throw and break neutral. I do it too. I would <laughs> recommend you always do it on the ground, though. You should never jump in the weapon throw, because it gives them a lot of time to react, and it doesn't keep you moving forward. Okay. Because uh, when you weapon throw in the air, uh, you stop. You see? Now uh, you just, like, kind of, mm -hmm. nothing happens. Uh, when you weapon throw on the ground, you can keep dashing, you can keep moving. It's just better to weapon throw on the ground and then chase forward with it, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, those were bad dodges, so it's not that big of a deal. Downlight, nice. Okay. God, he's so cool. The reversal sig. That one's actually good because it slides you off stage, so. But usually if they're on stage, then don't reverse it. That was a good read. I will say that if you have reads like this, you're losing out on damage. This is this is. I hope you understand that this is the basic read on Gong. Sorry, right? this is the basic. They're gonna dodge down read. But why do you do end light instead of doing a GC side light? That's my question, right? Mm -hmm. You end light him, and then you really weren't gonna get much out of it. He would have had to fall and then move to the left while falling to get hit by this because he can't dodge into that. You went mm -hmm. for another read, but he can't dodge into your second read. So really, you're hoping that he gets hit by that. Uh, mm -hmm. There are ways for you to continue on that pressure, but I'm just saying that sidelight is more reward and easier to do. And we we just talked about risk reward and blah blah yes. blah, right? So look at what your reward is. You you have the read in your head. So what's your reward for it? Is not that it's sidelight, another sidelight. Mm -hmm. And if you're a goat like me, you don't GC your sidelight. You just ledge cancel it on here, and then you get another mm -hmm. one for free. And then you have a third dodge to hit him with the the super surprise, and he won't even know what's going on anymore. I disconnect if I go ahead by three sidelights in a row. Um, where so something was messy here. I think it was this end light, down light, end light backwards. Yeah, you're you're doing yeah, stuff that was too fast. Yeah, but you're doing stuff too fast anyway because uh, the miss input was the turnaround, not the end light. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't really miss input end light like that because I'm pretty sure you just want to do an end light here. But you're facing the wrong direction because you're thinking too fast and you're in, in, uh, pressing buttons too fast. And end light is not what you do here anyway. And I'll mm -hmm. talk about this when we're in train mode, but you are not doing enough downlights. And that's the best move on your kit. Nice. Well, less nice, but okay, sure. Interesting. Uh, not interesting, that was insane. Okay. 
All right, so this is core. I'll, I'll use Jake so you feel at home. No worries. That's Jake. Can't wait for the Christmas time. I get gotta get that uh, snowman. Snowman core. Oh yeah, you don't have that. <laughs> yeah, you know me. Big drip. Mhm. Mm All right. So, first thing we're gonna I want to point out again for the last time is that side light nair and what what mm -hmm. it means to do side light nair. This is side light nair. Oops. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pretend he's the inhumans you're queuing into who don't dodge. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is side light nair. They need they dodge now, right? Hopefully, mm -hmm. right? Hopefully they dodge now. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get this. But let's say, uh, but now let's say to dodge, okay? And uh, I'll decide to dodge to random and not try to react to whatever he does. I missed because I'm terrible, but you get the idea. Uh, yeah. You you get more reward out of catching that dodge than uh, mm -hmm. if anything else. And I'll decide to neutral so I can prove my point. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is side light. Uh, like, let's say you get the side light nair, and then he dodges the nair. Okay. You all you got for that was nair damage. That was your bonus. Your bonus was nair damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is side light nair when you read the dodge, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see my point? Yeah. You, you, yeah. It's way more damage to punish them for dodging the side light than hitting that nair for free and then doing nothing with it. Okay. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's basically what I, I meant by that the entire time. And he still doesn't have that dodge back because it's an aerial dodge too. Like, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a lot of time where he doesn't get his dodge back. Like, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even notice how long that was because I got to do like ground pound too before he dodged. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, but yeah. Uh, another thing you're not doing enough of, you're doing a lot of this, but you're not doing it nearly enough of this. So you're doing this usually to punish something, but it's also mm -hmm. probably your best approach option, and it's also probably your best bait option when you do stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. Those are, uh, like, and we talked about how you can hit the combos. Okay, mm -hmm. cool, so now hit them. Now go for them, right? You you should be at least trying to go for them. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing you go for enough of GC downlights, mainly because you're not jumping a lot, and that's not a bad thing, but you need mm -hmm. to know when you can jump. There are times where I see you go for this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this turns into this because a lot of times people aren't going to punish that there. Uh, mm -hmm. So I will say, if you're keeping track of the things I'm telling you, is uh, to because I can coach. I can coach what you give me, right? I can tell mm -hmm. you what you're doing wrong, and I can tell you what you can be doing better. Well, here's mm -hmm. what you can be doing better. You can be using the broken moves in your kit. Right? Mm -hmm. You can use the move that does 14 damage and then combos into every other move for some reason, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing this a lot, and this will get you what you were doing like this, right? That's cool. Mm -hmm. But it's not this. This move is not fair. This is your mm -hmm. best move. You need to use it more, okay? okay. Uh, and it's the same thing with Hammer, and I haven't seen how you play Sword Lord help you on that weapon. Uh, but yeah. it's the same thing on this weapon, where I'm seeing you do a lot of these, and I'm mm -hmm. seeing you do a lot of these when they're in the air, but I'm not seeing you do a lot of these when it gets to be hit like that, right? I'm not seeing you do a lot of these. These these, these are the moves you care about. And uh, that's the case for a lot of people. And when I say that's the difference because you can hit every combo, but you don't know what moves you need to be putting out because you don't understand what the best move is. You don't, mm -hmm. you're, you're not, it's not clear to you. This okay. move, I don't understand how it's in the game. Okay, I'm gonna be frank with you. This move doesn't belong in the game. It makes no sense. It's completely broken, all right? It exists just to annoy me with how broken it is. I don't comprehend it. Same with this move. This move is not fair. This move, this move is very fair. You don't need to use it. Don't use fair moves, all right? Mm -hmm. Like, just being frank with you, don't use fair moves. Why would you use fair moves when there are unfair ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So, go over these more. Uh, and obviously, uh, I can't, I'm not gonna, like, I don't look at more games after, like, you don't come back to me and tell me, oh, uh, I started using Downlight, can you look at these games? But what you do do is tell me, I've been using Downlight more, and is it mm -hmm. working or is it not? Because you need to use Downlight more, okay? So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you it right now, implement these moves in your play. You need to do these moves more, because I'm not seeing you do them at all. This move is completely overtuned, all right? Uh, okay. This move is completely over to you. It's a free approach. In those times where I'm seeing you not sure what you want to do, th that's where you throw in them, right? And uh, okay. just a little thing I looked at earlier. Uh, they have no jump. I mean, they have no dodge. You sidelight them. Then you jump there. It's really simple. Uh, sometimes sidelight sends you a lot further, but the idea is the same. You just jump there. It's a. Uh, it's just the easiest punish for when they have no dodge, and uh, it'll let you 
get done what you want to get done. I know some people like to dash jump, and uh, that's more consistent and gets you more range, so that's cool. But yeah, uh, what else do I want to look at? What I usually do is open up someone else's game just so you can see what, uh, what it looks like when the GOAT is playing it. And by GOAT, I mean Phazon, who is not really a GOAT because he likes to interrupt me. Alright, we're going to look at... So this game is going to be bad because uh, I'm just the best player in the world and there's no way he was going to beat me. So he loses this, but the... The idea isn't whether he wins or loses, it's uh, about the options I want to see, I want to show you that he took, right? Okay. So I'm going to look at uh, footage from my own BCX VOD. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to look at me play Hammer here. Uh, like I said, you also play Sword, so you can also look at me play Sword. Alright guys. But so you, for cool. the most part, like you didn't send me any Sword gameplay at all from Hattori. And you you know yeah. Hattori is like my third main or something, second yeah. or whatever level high level but it doesn't matter uh that's not really the point and uh you mm -hmm. can ignore me in the top right yeah i really do look like that i'm sorry uh but <laughs> you can see how you play sword here i don't know how you play sword so seeing me play yeah. sword like this isn't really that much of a big thing for you but you can see what i'm going mm -hmm. for i'm going for the moves that i've decided are the broken moves you mm -hmm. like there are times where i like you can see here i'm going for down like you have to understand that every move does a certain amount of damage and uh mm -hmm. When a move does uh, 30 damage, which Stomp does 30 damage, and you're probably going, Stomp doesn't do 30 damage, it's 9. Stomp, stomp, stomp for combos into Sam, yeah. so it does 30 damage, okay? So, when a move does 30 damage, yeah. Sorry about that. You're good. Alright. As I was saying, when a move does 30 damage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that means you want to be going for that move. That move is doing 30 damage. That means that that means your goal is to go for that move. Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's say Hammer Down Light didn't do 30 damage, right? Then mm -hmm. you would be thinking, oh, End Light does more than Down Light, so I want to use End Light here. I want to be looking for End Lights instead of Down Lights, right? The, complete, mm -hmm. the entire way you play the weapon changes. Like, you can see, as I'm playing here, I'm just looking for Nair's, because uh, Nair is like, it's just that move. That move does a lot. It does 15 damage, and it give, keeps you in a really good position. So I'm mm -hmm. looking for Nair's, and I'm looking for Dares. That's how you play it. You're looking for those good moves. You're not mm -hmm. looking for moves that don't matter. I'm not really going for Endlight on Sword, because Endlight on Sword doesn't matter. Downlight on Sword mm -hmm. is, what is, is what does the damage. It's what gives you that good position that you want. Everything mm -hmm. else is relevant, right? I'm looking for the moves that are important to me. I'm really not going to throw out an end light here anytime soon. Same thing with Hammer. You see, I look for that side light, and then mm -hmm. I don't get punished for it because it doesn't lock me down. The risk reward, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Th those are the things that matter. Those moves matter. Uh, you see how I flip the recovery, but that's obvious to see. Okay, so... Same thing, uh, just sword gameplay. Uh, you, I'm going for moves that are important. Mm -hmm. The highest value moves, the least, the least risky moves. I shouldn't be going for stairs like that, and that's why I throw it away because I'm just a terrible sword player who wants to play hammer all day. So, see, I, I end light and I actually get punished for it because it, it's not actually worth going for end light. Same thing mm -hmm. with that nair there. Uh, and you'll see how you get punished a lot more based on what you do. Yeah. Same thing with Nair. Nair does 20 damage, so when you're in the air, you're looking for Nair. That's like, it's it's not complicated, is it, right? It's like, oh, no, this move just, is broken? Do this yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. This move. <laughs> I think I play mainly thing here, but the, that's not even the point of this game, so I'm just going to... Wait yeah. till I feel like this game is dragged on and I'm gonna switch to the other one. Who is this, Crocky? Yeah, yeah, it's Crocky. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you saw the side light again to punish the end light. It's kind of what I was talking about before. Bodvar also has that side sig option, so I could have gone for side sig there, but it's not really valuable mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm 
Yeah, like uh, drop down, sit down late, don't go for the end late, it's not really important to me. Keep hammer on white because of the 40 damage. Mm hmm. And then get the 40 damage. He dodged it. It wasn't true anymore because of the weapon throw. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Really bad gameplay for me. But yeah, you can see how and what I mean by the damage uh, chipping. Uh, I'm really only hitting him with side lights here. And he's hitting me back, but I'm always doing more damage just because Hammer will always do more damage, right? So mm -hmm. you want to keep in your mind, oh, this move is good, and this move does the most damage, and you just keep hitting those moves. That's mm -hmm. usually your goal. That down light was once again bad. I actually hate that move, but there are times where you have to use it just because you can't use the other thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are definitely better examples of me playing uh, Hammer, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's relevant. What is this? Oh, I didn't know I put this in here, but... Uh, this is... Uh, what game is this? Okay, he gets like... There's a game where he three stocks me, but it's not here. That would, game would be better for you, but it's fine. Uh, but yeah, you can see how, he get, how his value carries on and how he's jumping a lot more than you. Because mm -hmm. uh, Gauntlets... Oops. Uh, Gauntlet's only strength on the ground is down light, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna be frank with you that the everything else on Gauntlet sucks on the ground. Side light is not that crazy, mm -hmm. and uh, end light is very close to your body, and mm -hmm. what that also means is that to actually get in range to hit end light, you would have had to be in the air and land on them because you can't just walk up to them with an end light, right? That's insane. Yes, yeah. you'll get hit out of it. So, uh, for the most part, stuff like this works. And you'll see how he goes back in the air, and then he just continues floating. Bow is really good to deal with people that are floating, which is why I'm playing Koji here. So I'm counterpicking them really, but and you, mm -hmm. but you can see, I keep pressing F5 because I think <laughs> it's a brawlhalla replay. So sorry, but uh, right there, what you saw was uh, the nair thing, right? You saw how he uh, got way more value out of his nair than actually not going for it he, right, he waits for the read he gets the read and then he gets this because it's way more valuable to go for that than to punish me not dodging in the first place mm -hmm. am I really this good at Brawlhalla? <laughs> yeah one of the reasons I uh, picked you specifically like for because uh, I knew I wanted coaching I just didn't know who it was because I knew you played uh, the Hattori, and then I knew you played the uh, Bodvar in a lot of tournaments. It's mm -hmm. like, well, 10,000 hours, Hammer Guide. Yeah. Yes. Why is Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I uh, think if you kept watching, you kind of see what his gameplay consists of. But yeah, he almost always goes for the weight after the side light because it's actually just really mm -hmm. just better. I'm sorry you can hear the water running. This is almost done though, so I shouldn't do that thing. Okay. Uh, you see the GC downlights and how important they are for the kit. Like that, that's your goal, honestly. Uh, GC downlight. Yeah, okay, so it's another thing where it's like, we just talked about it, it's like, okay, here is what does the most damage, right? Mm -hmm. GC downlight into the three hits do the most damage, and here's the best move, downlight. So why would you not be going for it, right? You should be uh, you should be playing gauntlets with the mentality that I want to hit GC downlight. So everything else you're trying to do is not that. If you're trying to hit end light, stop trying to hit end light and start trying to hit GC down light. If you're looking for nares, stop looking for nares and start looking for GC down light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright, uh... This 
game kind of starts going downhill for him because I'm who I am, so. Mm -hmm. But I think this game does not showcase him at his best either, but he gets some stuff uh, towards the later end of it. Yeah, you can see the floating still. Floating is like, floating is just the best option for Gauntlet's a lot of the time, so I would recommend that you jump more. Look for stuff like that, obviously. It's really good. Sarah. But yeah. I love my house, by the way. It's amazing. <laughs> Nothing like the microwave. It's almost like when the food is done, you take it out, but not here. <laughs> you leave it in, so it beeps ten more times. important is the kill he gets to bring his hopes back into this game so uh, let's look at from my death to after and like and you can see how he's floating and he goes for these sairs and the only time he will end light is when he's like this because he did that sair right so uh, mm -hmm. for the most part and he goes for the GC downlights because they're hard to punish you don't really care about side light because it's actually not that easy to hit uh, and you can see how that went. So he got a lot and then pushed me off the stage and gone through their thing. He keeps the gauntlets because they're what he wants. I love it. Mm -hmm. Danzig. Oh, yeah. You can see how he stops and he goes, okay, what? I got hit. I'm not going to go back in. And he's thinking about his next move probably. And I'm not going to chase him down. So I, I give him the room and then I move forward just to keep my pressure up. It's, it's mm -hmm. just simple. You can see how he's still going for these GC downlights. They're the best damage he's going to get. Uh, he's mm -hmm. kind of playing all for nothing, so he does continue trying to go off stage with that ground pound. It's not going to work because uh, I'm just like not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. You can still see the floating coming out. It's just the best way to play gauntlets. And honestly, from where he was, you can see how well he does of a job of bringing this back, even though he kind of throws the weapon there and it kind of messes him up, puts him in a really bad spot, but mm -hmm. you get the idea of it all. Uh, jumping is a good thing to do on gauntlets because as we've already talked about like when you go why am i jumping for or why is what's the point of jumping when i see people jump on sword a lot i'm like oh you don't need to be jumping this much uh because sword has all good moves uh all of swords moves do the same damage uh, mm -hmm. and for the most part you're okay with throwing all of them out but let's like but that that's not sword right you don't care because on gauntlets you don't care about this move by itself you don't Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really care about hitting this move. You use it if you can, and then you convert into that. But a lot of these moves you don't care about. This is something you care about. That is something you should look for. You should be playing around the game around thinking, uh, oh, how can I bait to get this? How can I do something to get that? That's your goal, okay? So, yeah. Uh, I think you should bring all the moves we just talked about into your play, and then slow it down where we talked about where you need to you weren't that bad at, and you weren't rushing that hard and when you had time and space you worked with it uh mm -hmm. we talked about how you need to push your advantages when you get one hit and how you can turn it into your next hit and we talked about the difference between doing that and taking a hit and doing nothing with it where it's like mm -hmm. oh i'm too scared to continue my move mm -hmm. uh, and the difference between i'm too scared to continue my moves and actually continuing them. being confident and carrying yourself off a hit is one of the best ways to play Brawlhalla, especially if you are not already at the highest. Because uh, at the highest, people start mixing things up. They start waking up out of attacks. You start missing and they start punishing you. But mm -hmm. till you get to that point, confidence is your best friend. I play, mm -hmm. I, I don't smurf a lot. And last time I did was like a year ago or like mm -hmm. earlier this year. And when I did, you quite literally just do whatever you want because uh, you are sure. You are sure what you're doing. And... Mm -hmm. For you, that means taking your next snare. That mean that doesn't mean stopping, because if you stop, then that's just like you're. It's like why why let them be on the same level as you? And uh, no matter how you want to look at it, I think the best mentality to have, especially if you are not playing against the literal best people in the world, right? For me, mm -hmm. it's hard to say that. Oh, I'm just better than this guy because these people are all, are the best people in the world. I'm playing against the best people in the world. I'm one of the yeah. best people in the world. For you, you can go. You have the right to go. I'm just going to be better than this guy. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. you can go. This guy is because this guy isn't the guy you're playing against. Isn't playing perfectly. He's not. He's probably he's playing as bad as you are. He's the same rank as you, right? So mm -hmm. you can go 
to that guy, you can go, I am as I'm I'm better than you. I'm going to play better than you're playing right now. And you and then you start fixing your mistakes and you start pushing yourself to be better than him, right? Because he's making mistakes and they're obvious enough for you to continuously see them and continuously go, This is what I fix here, this is how I do this. Mm-hmm. Be- for me it's a lot harder because I make a mistake and the other person makes a mistake and our mistakes are so small we go for such little risk mistakes that it's like okay they made a mistake but is it that big of a deal these mistakes you're seeing you can punish them to the max and you can improve yourself by a lot if for me and for other people it's hard to improve yourself when you're already at this point because uh, mm-hmm. improvement is like it's not it's it doesn't just like there, it goes to a peak like you go up and it's hard to get better if someone better than you doesn't come in uh, mm-hmm. when sandstorm started playing everyone improved a bunch because it's a new peak someone else is playing so okay. insanely well yeah. that now you have to play so insanely well and play to match up with it mm-hmm. there are so many people above you that every single time you play you should be pulling out that didn't make sense whatever but you should, every single time you play you need to push yourself forward you need to become even better than you were at the start of that game because mm-hmm. these people are not the best they sure they're better than you but there is nothing stopping you it's a hard for you to be better than these people it is very hard for someone to be better than sandstorm when they're already close in skill to sandstorm and we're already at the top of it's gonna get someone needs to come in and be even better someone needs to be another sandstorm for mm-hmm. us to get much better than we are, right? Yeah. But for you, that's not the case. You have room to work with. You, We helped you spot your mistakes here. I hope you mm-hmm. learned something. I hope uh, you kind of understood where I was coming from with a lot of the stuff. I yeah. hope you're able to put it in and actually work with it. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions for me, I'll answer them right now. Whether it has to do um, with the weapon mentality or whatever. Uh, as far as like weapon mentality, I think like uh, approaching on hammer, like sometimes I like can't like see an approach like they're playing passive and they're like thinking about what they're gonna do mm-hmm. like i just don't know how to approach on hammer uh hammer is really hard with approaches because i'm i and if you ask a lot of hammer players they'll agree that hammer doesn't really approach well mm-hmm. without uh sidelight and uh nair and mm-hmm. i will tell you that when i was watching you play you don't do enough side lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's your definitely your best friend when you want to approach on hammer. If you're trying to get in on hammer, you're looking for a side light and you're looking for a falling there. You're not looking for anything else because nothing else is going to land you a hit. Okay. okay. Like nothing else is uh, even like capable of hitting uh, besides those two things. So it's not even like worth to. If someone's like running away from you, you're not gonna dash and light them, right? You're not gonna fall and stare yeah. them because that takes too long to start up. Falling there and side light are your best friends for approaching. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Mm. Alright. That's it. Alright. Really quick. Well, I'm going to end the video here. So, all the all the all noise in my room gets very loud in a different language. But goodbye, YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. 